Hello again, everyone. This is Chris Shira, and that's Robert Harding. This is the Citizen Sports Weekly for a early Wednesday, March 18, 2015. Hope you folks had a happy St. Patrick's Day. It's my mom's birthday today. Happy birthday. She's 29. That, Again. That's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> She's, I guess that makes me, what, 30? <laughs> if you go by that... Some alternate universe, Some I alternate suppose. universe. So, Anyways, uh, we got some big stories going here. We have breaking news, although I'm not going to pull CNN and have the breaking news scrolling across <laughs> the bottom of the screen. We have breaking news. Jim Bayheim has announced that he's finally retiring. Although for some Syracuse fans, it's like, no. I mean, we were talking about this in the newsroom. And, I mean, it is a surprise that he announced his retirement. But when you think about it, this guy is seventy, going to be 71 years old. And, you know, he's going to retire in three years. So he's going to be 74. I mean, realistically, that's probably when he was going to retire anyways. It's not really much of a surprise when you're over the age of 70 and you announce your retirement. Okay? If this was 10 years ago, I'd be a little more surprised. But, you know. And the other, the other shoe to drop in the NCAA, uh, you know, allegations or whatever you want to call it, scandal, is uh, Daryl Gross, the... Um, Syracuse Athletic Director is no longer the Syracuse Athletic Director. He's basically, uh, I guess you could say, taking a golden parachute. He uh, changes positions. He gets, yeah. a, he gets like a special assistant to the chancellor and a uh, professorship at the uh, Falk School of Sports Management. <laughs> so he gets to like basically teach a class, let the TA do all the work, and collect the money. Nice. Like I said, golden parachute. Robert, I'll let you go off on Beheim. Oh, excuse me. Start off on Beheim first. Go off on Beheim. Go Bayheim. off on Beheim. No, that's what Beheim does. But go ahead and talk about Beheim, please. You know, it's the timing for me. I mean, it, it's it's all connected. You know, and and you certainly make a valid point that you know he is up there in age. At some point, he is going to retire. Uh, you know, it just it, it's part of you know it's part of the uh, transition process. I mean, he's not going to you know, let the university down. He's not going to let uh, Mike Hopkins down, who's, of course, you know, the presumed coach in waiting. Yes. Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot of different pieces to this, but, I mean, it, it is it all comes back to the NCAA report and uh, the allegations, uh, well, not the allegations, the findings in that report and, and what Bayheim was uh, supposedly guilty of, what Gross, uh, his role in it. You know, and those are the two main figures really in this. I mean, you can point at the players and, you know, these other characters involved, but, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, for Gross, it's the entire athletic department. There were other teams that were affected by this, the football team included. Uh, so, it you know, it happened under his watch. And for Bayheim with the basketball team, it happened under his watch too. So, uh, you know, I mean, to me, the, it, it's a smart thing. At some point, Syracuse is going to have to move on, and I, I think this report really provides an opportunity to do that, to not only change the, the culture there and to make, uh, you know, make repairs where they need to, but also uh, welcome in a new, new uh, batch of leadership. You know, if I would have been really stunned if they had said Beheim's out right now or next year's is last year, okay? I mean, that's when you're thinking, like, wow, the NCAA, this this whole thing had a huge impact on the university where they're basically telling Jim, all right, you're gone, or you got one year and that's it. But they're giving him three years, which in college sports really is an eternity. It's an entire, almost an entire class of athletes. And uh, yeah, he's going to have to coach with the probation terms and everything. But the thing is, now if you're a recruit, you know how long Bayheim's going to be there. And I would have been more stunned if Mike Hopkins had been um, been told, like if they had said like Mike Hopkins is not going to be the next coach that um, someone else we're going to open it up for a, a search in three years but that doesn't look like that's the case Mike Hopkins is going to be the coach you could say that he deserves it he's been there a long time twenty years almost and he deserves his chance and everything and uh, that would have been more of a shocker if that had happened the gross thing I mean look it's all public relations like I just said he he's just get he's getting paid okay they didn't kick him to the curb. He's getting paid, all right? And that's really what it comes down to. We all want to get paid in life, okay? And he's going to get paid, but he's no longer the athletic director. So, you know, they'll find somebody else. And, you know, Gross, look, 
he's done things I don't agree with. The whole New York's college team stuff I thought was a joke. A bunch of, you know, you know. look, I understand there's more people living in New York City than Syracuse, okay? And yes, you want to expand your brand name. And there's ways you could have done that, but saying New York's college team is an insult to SUNY Buffalo, which actually has New York on their, their basketball jerseys, and other, especially New York City area colleges like St. John's, okay? Um, or Manhattan, or, you know, areas, uh, colleges that actually are in the New York City area, Fordham, that actually are New York-centric related. So, uh, But he did a great job raising money, and that's what athletic directors are paid to do, raise money, build facilities, get the best quality student-athletes in there, uh, student-athletes, get the best quality athletes in there and compete and make, and make more money. And he got SU into the ACC, and that's realistically going to be his biggest legacy, that, you know, when the Big East was going down, uh, he found a nice little lifeboat in the ACC because I read one person, I uh, forgot who it was, basically saying, if, you know, if Gross wasn't the athletic director at Syracuse, Syracuse would be UConn right now. They'd be in that All-American Conference, yeah. okay, which is basically Division I limbo. Okay. So, look, Gross did some good things. Fair is fair. He did some good things, but I, I don't agree with the way he ran everything. I think the guy was a publicity hound. He loved to get his name in the paper. Uh, he, he loved to getting attention on him. He liked to be the smartest guy in the room and everything and the coolest guy in the room and, you know, something. I mean, look, Jay Crowdhammel, was, was, who was Gross's predecessor, was the guy that you always saw in the hallway at the curry dump smoking a cigarette at halftime. He was a no-nonsense guy. Yeah, his thinking was in the past and everything, but he did a decent job running the athletic programs at Syracuse. And, there was, and he retired, and there was time for a change to do something a little more modern. And Gross did it, I give you that. But the personality styles, I'll take Jay Crowdhamill over Daryl Gross any day of the week, folks. So... So now for the future of Syracuse basketball, I mean, look, all the recruits are still coming. they got a top 25 recruiting class coming. They're going to be okay. The sky isn't falling. Let's, let's, every, let's take a deep breath and just say, like, you know something? The shock is over. We go back to normal. And that's realistically what's going to happen. We're going to go back to normal. Yeah, there's probation, but come on. They're going to survive that. So. Yeah, the, I, was, I was having a couple of debates on Twitter today, and, you know, people – Really, you know, they're still pointing the finger at the NCAA, and you know, it's really misguided. You know, the university now. You know, I I'm certainly no fan of the NCAA. Right. Uh, you know, if you've watched uh, John Oliver yeah, I on saw last that. week tonight, well done. That was a fantastic yeah. clip, and you know, there's nothing in there I don't, you know, disagree. It was with. a takedown. It was a takedown, and uh, you know, I, I think the NCAA there there's a lot wrong with it, but you know. <laughs> The rules are the rules, and you know the NCAA has come down hard on other institutions, and Syracuse uh, is not exempt from that. No, and uh, they they were found to be guilty of this, and you know uh, a lot of pe people point to the timing. Well, you know you could argue the same thing with the the postseason ban, the self imposed ban mm -hmm. that Syracuse handed down, that they didn't announce until uh, they were into the ACC schedule. Right. So. You know, it's uh, life will go on. You know, the team will come back next year. Shot to make the tournament. Uh, good recruiting class. You know, uh, Bayheim will have an opportunity to bounce back, and uh, you know, hopefully, you will. And you know, we'll be back to talking about a, a team that's a top ten team again. Yeah, I mean, Bayheim. Look, I mean, you can draw some parallels with Joe Paterno, but nobody coaches forever. Nobody lives forever. Everything is going to end. The Bayheim era is going to end. It just, it's going to happen, and, and whether it happened today or, or three years from now, it's going to happen. So you might as well face it. The guy is 70, 71 years old. He's still a good coach, okay, but we all get old, even you. I'm, hey, I'm turning 29 in a couple months. Young. Getting up there. Yeah. <laughs> so everything, everything, look, everything changes. Nobody stays there forever. Enjoy the good times, enjoy the memories, but, again, things change, so... Now, one thing that never changes is the excitement of the NCAA That's right. men's basketball tournament. Syracuse March, or not. March Madness is upon us. Now, we had two play-in games last night. And of course, yours truly picked both of them wrong. Thanks, me, BYU. Me too. And, um, <laughs> but the, the, the action starts tomorrow. It gets hot and heavy. For me, for my money, folks, the first four days of the NCAA men's tournament Without a doubt, four of the best days of the sports calendar all year. Maybe the baseball playoffs, the first round of the baseball playoffs. Uh, maybe the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Okay, I'm not going to discriminate. I like hockey. Um, 
You know, maybe the uh, the first round of the NFL draft, first round of the NFL playoffs. I mean, it's just, you know, opening weekend in, in, in the NFL. I mean, there's just certain times where you're like, yeah, this is, I'm watching this. This is must-see TV. And this is definitely it. And we got a great tournament. we got some excellent teams. And I think it's going to be a fun tournament. I mean, I think everybody's wondering, can Kentucky finish the deal, go undefeated, and win the NCAA tournament and be the first team since Indiana in 1976 to finish a season undefeated? My answer is no. I don't think they're going to do it. I think, I, and, and Robert and I have our picks in front of us, and we can get into those a little bit. Uh, I have Kentucky going to the Final Four, but I have them losing in the semifinals to Wisconsin. A very good Wisconsin team. A very good Wisconsin team of, of, with some seniors on it. I think that means something. And I think that the pressure is going to really get tough on Kentucky, and I think they're going to be missing some free throws, and I think that's what's going to hurt them um, against uh, Wisconsin. I almost picked Kentucky to lose against Notre Dame mm. in the regional final in Cleveland. So, I don't, look, Kentucky's a great basketball team. You don't go undefeated in the SEC uh, unless you're a very good basketball team. But we all know the tournament is a completely different animal. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot different, and I think that's where the pressure is going to catch up to the, the Wildcats, and uh, they're not going to go undefeated. My other Final Four teams besides the Wildcats and the Badgers, uh, Villanova, the Wildcats, and the Iowa State Cyclones. Well, I'm going a little different here. I always like another uh, – I like three seeds – Three seeds, I think, are underrated. You know, Syracuse was a three seed, but they won that's the right. national title in 2003. Right. Iowa State's my dark horse. So that's where I'm going. Nova, Iowa State, Kentucky, Wisconsin. Nova and Wisconsin in the title game, and Wisconsin as my NCAA champion. Yeah, I, I'm still tinkering with my brackets in terms of the <laughs> Final Four, but yeah. the Final Four I have right now is Kentucky, Wisconsin, Virginia, and Duke. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to me, you know, you mentioned, you know, the having Kentucky and Wisconsin on that side of the bracket. I think for Kentucky, uh, if Wisconsin advances that far, uh, or even, uh, you know, Wisconsin has to get through Arizona and their region. Yeah, that was, I have to admit, it was tough picking against them. I think either of those teams really, uh, if Kentucky, you know, gets to that point, they're in the Final Four, they face Wisconsin or Arizona, that's really their championship game. I don't think anyone on the other side of the uh, other side of the draw, whether it's Villanova, Duke, Gonzaga, I, I don't think they'll beat Kentucky if Kentucky makes it to the title game. So you know, really, it's about getting through that side, their side of the uh, the draw. So you know, with Wisconsin and Arizona, tough uh, in their own region. You got Kansas, you got Notre Dame. Uh, they got to get through uh, either Maryland or West Virginia or. You know, surprise teams like Buffalo or Valparaiso. I mean, it's not it's not an easy road. No, to the title. It isn't. For them. I mean, realistically, if you're a number one seed, the I mean, the first game is literally a bye. Okay, I'm sorry, 16 is ever going to be a one. I mean, it could happen. Yeah, it could happen, but it's not going to happen this year. The second game, arguably, it's a little tougher, but realistically, you should cruise with that one. Once you get to the regional finals, every game those last. Four games are all slugfest. You're going to be going up against top 30 caliber teams. They're all going to be gunning for you. It is going to be a slugfest. Kentucky is not going to. If Kentucky blows out everybody and wins the title, I will be surprised. Uh, I think after the second round, realistically, their their wins, if they keep winning and advancing, will be single digit victories. And that's where I said that the the free throw shooting is going to be so important. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I mean, look, Stony Brook and Albany. I didn't bring up Albany yet, but you know, my Great Danes, great game, Peter Hooley. A, you know, if St- Stony Brook makes through free throws in the last couple of minutes, they win that game. That's right. End of story. That's it. Okay. Um, so free throw shooting and it's underrated, but it is so important this time of year. You need to make free throws late in the game if you're going to hold on. And I don't think Kentucky. It's going to happen to Kentucky. They're going to miss some free throws and it's going to come back and bite them. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. It's always a crapshoot with uh, with the tournament. I mean, even a team like Kentucky that is undefeated, you know, undefeated in the SEC, I might add, not exactly a power basketball conference. No, it's a solid conference. You know, though. it's good. You know, they've got they certainly Arkansas have some teams. Is a good team. Yeah, they certainly have some teams in the uh, in the tournament. But you know, you you compare it to an ACC yeah. or you know a Big Ten or even a Big Twelve. You know, or Pac twelve or Pac twelve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's not, you know, their schedule, at least this year, probably wasn't as tough as it would have been in past mm-hmm. years. So, 
you know, it, it's going to be it's going to be fun to watch. You know, I, I, on the other side, uh, you know, like I said, I have Virginia and Duke making it. Um, you know, that that's tough for me. I mean, there's really, you know, <laughs> there's probably six or seven teams that could easily make the final four Absolutely. on this side. Um, you know, never count out Louisville. No, yeah. and, and and you know, it's funny. I don't have them. I have them losing Northern Iowa. I just like this story, and I, I just think Louisville. You know, they're not as good as they as they usually are. I mean, I understand Patino coach teams in the tournament. You don't take them lightly, but they haven't really been that impressive this season. Yeah, they've had some good wins and everything, but I mean, they have not been dominant like they usually are. Every team has an off year. I mean, look, look at Syracuse. It happens. Yeah. I mean, look at Florida. I mean, you know, Florida last year was the number one team going into the tournament. This year they didn't even make it. Right. So, I mean, I think Louisville's having, a, for Louisville, a down year is making the tournament, really. So, I, I'm not a big fan of Louisville going that far. But, again, you never know. So, Anything else you want to add, Robert? Or? No, no, just that, uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I, you know, I found myself this year looking at the bracket and saying, wow, there's, you know, there's definitely plenty of upsets, yeah. upset possibilities out there. And you know, even it, even in uh, Kentucky's region, the Midwest region, uh, there's a few teams yeah. that could you know if Kentucky doesn't, that could make it out of there and in, into the Final Four. So it's going to be a wide open yeah. uh, tournament and hopefully fun to watch. Well, the last time a major team, I think it was a Wichita State or one of the mid majors entered the tournament undefeated a couple of years ago or last year. Last they, year, yeah. yeah, I think it was was a Wichita State maybe. Wichita State, and they obviously they didn't get it. They got to the Final Four though, right? They yeah they yeah. they made it deep but they but they didn't, didn't win the whole thing. Yeah. But the last time I think they team, lost to Kentucky. Yeah, actually. the last time a major team got to the tournament undefeated was UNLV back in 1990 or 91, and that's the team that got that got beat by Duke. So it's so difficult. There's just so much pressure on you, and when you're a young team like Kentucky is, I think it gets even more difficult. So we'll see what happens. But I'm just I don't think they're going to be cutting down the nets, folks. Sorry. So. Robert, anything else you want to add? Or? I'm All right. Say. Now we'll wrap it up, folks. Hey, enjoy those tournament games. Enjoy. I'll tell you, man, I'll be glued to the TV for the next four days. It's going to be a lot of fun. And go Great Danes. Pull off that upset. Beat Oklahoma. We'll see you next week.